replace the gas that spilled. Hey, tubers, welcome back for another adventure. Wow, it was only last week when I bought this Lin High 300 4x4. Um, came with this remote engine, and uh, currently it appears to be seized, but somebody drove a bolt into it. I don't know quite why they would do that. Anyway, I want to see if this engine will run. <sighs> Probably more out of curiosity than the fact that I'm actually going to use it. And the reason why I say that is I'm, I'd really like to put a different engine on there. I'd really love to squeeze a Honda engine on there. And specifically, I'd like to squeeze the Honda 200S motor or 200M motor. That way I have electric start. But anyway, forget about all that. Let's see if this motor runs. So I got the bolt out of it, which seems to have unseized things. So let's go around a couple of times. The plug's in here, so it's fighting me. So that's one. And I'd say that's two. Wow. Sounds like it has compression. Anyway, let's hook up the jump pack, see if we can't get it to go round and round on its own. This thing doesn't have a recoil, so if the starter's done, so are we. All right, I'm gonna turn the jump pack on, then tap the negative lean against it. Um, that way I could kinda, if it looks like it's gonna jump off, I can drop the lead and grab onto it. So, let's see what it does. I like that. So, uh, let's check the oil, see what that looks like. Now, the last thing I want to do with this thing is put a load of oil into it. And uh, then <laughs> discover that it's dead. And now I have to drain the oil out of it before I can do anything else. Anyway, I got to put oil into it. And when it comes to the wiring harness, this got hacked up a little bit. But this blue wire and this yellow wire, those two go to the pulse generator. And then these three go to the alternator. Looks like they jacked on this a little bit. Probably from once it was loose rolling around well so I'll probably be able to get this engine to start um, but <laughs> let's not jump to the end before we get there um, just for a laugh I should probably do a compression test though it sounds everything like everything is good with that but I should probably do a compression test that never hurts either all right, compression check time. No carburetor. I put some oil in it. And we got the gauge all hooked up. Let's see what it does. Wow. It's like one... 40, 145. That's not bad. This engine, just by the looks of the coloration, the exhaust system, and everything else, I don't think there's that many miles on it. I don't think it's been used much at all. So, kind of makes sense the compression would be good. This is also kind of a, um, a long stroker, and it seems that the longer the stroke is, the higher the compression is. Also, the faster they turn around, the higher the compression is. So, given the combination of the two, it's not a surprise that we're coming in at the major part of 150. Jump pack, check. Portable CDI. Once again, the blue wire goes to the input. It's from the pulse generator, and it goes to the input, of the pulse generator input, 
to the CDI there. We got ground for the pulse generator. We got ground for the case. Spark plug wire, once again, inside the box. 12 volt CDI unit spark coil. And 12 volts worth of AA batteries in a nice little holder. So this is a cold start, right, you know. Um, and my experience is these things start or they just do not. Well, actually, let me set up the camera. Um, by the way, this is sketchy. This thing's going to be spinning at between 1 and 3,000 RPMs. Some of the blades are cut off, so... If, any, if you're doing anything stupid like this and things start to go bad, it's better to drop the engine on the floor than to drop the engine and your fingers on the floor. Just keep that in mind. All right, looks like you guys could see everything important. Portable CDI on. There's my throttle. I have the choke on. Well, let's see what happens. Oh. Pop the carburetor off. All right, I used the vacuum line to tie the carburetor on a little bit. I don't have a clamp here, and the diameter of the flange was a little too small, so I wrapped tape around, tape around it. Yeah, yeah, this is sketchy. Let's go with take two. On, wires all hooked up. Replace the gas that spilled. Like it so it runs now what so at this point I have three of these Lin high talons if that's what you want to call it um, and let's talk about what's wrong with each one of them the first one I got is a two-wheel drive it's a 260 it has an electrical problem particularly with the cooling fans. This one has an electrical problem, particularly, once again, with the cooling fans. And at some point he lost spark. And you can see he jacked the wires a little bit over there. So that's where his trouble was coming up. I could probably get the engine back in there and the, the um, variable pulley on the back, the torque converter that's on the engine, the front of the engine there. It looks like it's jacked up pretty good. So um, I guess I could take parts off one of the others for this, right? Um, that's something to consider. So I have three good engines, one of them removed, one that the transmission is debatable on, and one of them that if I went through the trouble of finishing it up, it'd be ready to go. What I'd love to do with this thing, and I don't know if I can, 
I'd love to squeeze a 200 S motor in there, a 200 M motor, an electrical start guy. Now, if I was able to do that, that would give me the five speed, even if I couldn't quite get the shifter out here where I could use it, I can always just put a hand shifter here. So I would have the high, low, reverse, I'd have four wheel drive, and I'd have a five speed, which I think would make it really cool. I would just chain drive to the transmission, and um, I would probably set it up as a one-to-one -one. and then between the low the high and the five speed i think that should give me all the gears i need this thing seems to be built like a truck i mean you you pick up the tail of this thing and you attempt to move it and it just it's just mean it just weighs a lot about the exhaust system you guys could see i have the intermediate pipe there and it looks like i have the muffler once again, I really don't think this was used much. I think I think it died of an electrical problem pretty quickly. What's also nice about this one is it came with the side covers. And I think I can borrow this piece off the one that's all mossy. So this one's also nice because it came with the extra plastic racks. racks. I don't know. That's what I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about trying to smash a 200S into it. I'm sure you guys will have some thoughts about that. Um, they took the radiator out of this thing, and they really hacked on the wiring. So unless I was going to get creative, and by creative, I mean um, perhaps getting the wiring out of a GM or a Ford, an Escort, something like that, um, they have switches that click on and off to turn the fan. A lot of times there's a, um, a snap switch that hits a relay that turns on the fan. The snap switch can't carry enough current to do the fan by itself, so it's got to go through a relay. So I might be able to, um, with some of the, with the other two, I might be able to do something like that. The other one the mossy one the last one i bought i also have to figure out why the uh why the um transmission won't shift i hope it's not dead it might be i see there's a little place to check the oil right there i should probably check that see if it's got a milkshake going on in there the other transmission might be slightly different than this too anyway whatever i'm just talking so let me shut up I want to thank you all for dropping by to watch and comment and subscribe. Uh, should you get one of these things? Um, the real problem appears to be electrical. Don't leave them outside. Don't leave them in the sun. Don't leave them to get wet. Try to store them inside. Not under cover, just not under a tarp. Try to store them inside because it appears as if the electricals is what get into trouble with these. I've criticized them, and I get a lot of things back, a lot of comments back saying, this is the best quad I've ever owned, it keeps up with everybody else, it's a brute, it's this, that, and the other thing. And I think all that's true if you keep them dry. Don't let the electronics get wet. And about running them through the mud and snow and all that other kind of stuff, I don't think I'd want to run you know mud through the fans electrically these guys are a little delicate so remember that if you're going to own one anyway i want to thank everybody for dropping by to watch and comment and subscribe please remember to keep your feet down your heads up and get out and enjoy each and every day bye now